Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you this evening. We're about halfway there on this Gottlieb Close Encounters of the Third Kind pinball machine. This thing uh, is a Gottlieb System 1, one of their first solid state games. I love these things. I, I really like the, the early solid state ones. They're very simple though. They're a lot like an electromechanical game because Gottlieb didn't want to let go. <laughs> they weren't ready to move on, man. Uh, so we've been doing a couple videos on it. We worked, we kind of showed the condition it was in when we got it, and then we worked on the power supply, we worked on the MPU, we worked on the driver board, uh, we worked on the connectors, we worked on the uh, the out hole where it wasn't kicking the ball out and all of that. And we now have the game at least limping along trying to play. Uh, it still has some issues with the display and the, the switches and uh, the roto target and and the soundboard and a bunch of stuff. But I don't really want to test it too much more while we have all of this dust and dirt on the play field. So we're going to go ahead and clean up the play field and get it looking good. So here's the condition that it's in at the moment. It's actually in very nice shape. It just has dirt and dust all over it. This was, uh, at the time, Gottlieb was owned by uh, Columbia Pictures. And so... Uh, they did this game at the same time that the movie was released, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. And uh, th these are simple games, though, so they don't have a lot going on. There's no speech or anything, of course. Uh, it's just simple little sounds that the thing can make. Uh, it's a simple game with a roto target, a spinner, two pop bumpers, and five drop targets, basically. But it's fun. I like all of these system ones. Uh, so we're going to clean this up. We don't really need to touch up the paint anywhere. It's all in good shape. Now, some people say that's because nobody ever played these. And other people say it's because Gottlieb put some kind of finish on it uh, that was more resilient than the ones from Williams, Williams and Valley, which may be true. I'm not sure. Um, it has this big alien man here on the play field that's kind of cool. Right? He's got his hand out. He's saying, right on, brother. Okay, um, I, but I think it's a, it's a beautiful play field. So what I think we'll do is I'm going to have my brother Joe come in. We'll set up the camera, and he'll go through and uh, clean it up. Now, and new rubber rings and all of that. Now, the, the thing is, though, we can't put it in attract mode like we usually do where all of the lights blink and all of that because Gottlieb System 1 games do not have an attract mode. They were just so simple <laughs> that they did not have an attract mode. Um, and this is running on the original hardware. It's got the original MPU and the original driver board in it. So we'll, uh, let's set up the, the, uh, the uh, tripod and we'll film as we go through. And uh, basically we're just going to clean it all up, put wax on it, put new rubbers on it, replace all the light bulbs, and we'll see what we can get the thing looking like. But as, as you can see, we're starting out in really good shape. It's really not even all that dirty. There is some dirt on it. But I think most of that's going to clean up. I think the alien is a believer too. Okay, so let's uh, let's see what we can do.
Joey, time. we keep having problems where the camera won't focus. Yep. He was trying to film it all for you folks with the focus on his camera. I'm going to throw it in the trash. We're getting a new camera. I just bought it. It's coming. We can't tell people which one we're getting because then they'll be like, oh, you should have you got the XP85. I tried to film it. <laughs> it's coming together pretty good, Joe. Boy, I was telling them about the protective coating. Whenever you get one with a bunch of dust on it, that that's like good. Mm -hmm. Because it they, they don't fade for some reason whenever they have a bunch of uh, dust on them. So that thing, man, it looks really good. Honestly, it looks almost brand new. There's a couple little spots. But... Yeah, I thought about touching that up, but it was so minor. Yeah, it's so nice. Let's leave it. Now it's all original. It's only original once. Yeah, it's only original once, people. Touching up games that don't need it. What are they thinking? I've had a bunch of people ask uh, how they originally painted them. They are silk screened. You can kind of see on this one. Um, if you look, if you let the light hit it, see the, how there's different levels? Like right there. That's because they silk screen each color on separately. So it um, on this particular one, just the process they used, you can actually see the lines where certain stuff is underneath the other paint when they put each color on. And we have people ask us about wax all the time. What wax do you use? We use car wax. <laughs> this stuff's great. We used to use uh, we we uh, we used a couple that were pinball waxes. I think there are some that are for pinballs that look really good. So, you know, you you may have a pinball wax you like that works better. But for a long time, we had a problem where we were using white wax, and you can see this stuff is yellow wax. You might think, oh, that doesn't matter. But the problem is these old pinball machines they have little cracks all in the playfield. So see the cracks, see it. It's just how they are, and they're all like that. And so if you use white wax, what happens is the white wax gets in those little cracks, and you see every little bit of it. So you'll see white lines all over the play field. We had a bunch of play fields uh, that we, we did over the years, and um, we, we always ran into that problem. And so whenever you got done waxing, you'd see white lines all over the place. But this stuff is thicker, and it's like a yellow color. So for whatever reason, you can't see it. I'm sure it's probably still in those cracks and stuff, but you just can't see it. Looks great. Gives you a nice shine. Obviously, you can see the lights reflecting off of it. Look at that. Well, that's high quality, Joe. Look what they tried to do to this rubber. What? No, Joe. No, that can't be. That can't be real. They couldn't have actually done that. We got. To, I'll show you here in a second. We got a customer calling. Joe said it was spam. They've been spamming us lately. Okay, are y'all ready for this? Are you, you're not standing up, are you? Sit down. You're going to fall on your ass if you're, not, if you're not sitting down. Joey, what is this? Somebody tried to get a little bit more life out of that rubber ring. That's not electrical tape, is it? Yes, it is. Oh, no, they hit an electrical tape. The ring back together, that couldn't have been possible. They're going to think we make this stuff up like they did that wood. Yeah. They thought we planted that wood and that pinball. People, we would never lie to make you buy. <laughs> We're not rigging this up, people. This is how the stuff comes to us. Now, a lot of people say, oh, what idiot would do that? It's not that. It's that they don't know where to get new rubber rings. So the thing breaks, what are they supposed to do? This is probably back in the olden days. Mm -hmm. And they probably got in a big fight with the guy at the uh, the um, arcade place, so they couldn't buy parts anymore. Yep. So uh, they made it happen with some electrical tape. Mm, mm, mm. We could just put it back on there, because that's kind of a mod now. Mm -hmm. Well, it's coming together pretty good, Joe. Now, there are a bunch of switches that don't work. You, did you fix those? Nope. The, also, the roto target doesn't work. Did you fix that? Nope. 
Okay, the uh, the uh, the fourth display. If I plug it in, it shorts out the power supply. Did you fix that? Nope. So I still, we still got some stuff to do. What what were you saying about the uh, sockets, Joey? They're crap. Joey said the sockets were crap. I keep having to mess with the light bulbs. You, I left some underneath. You're gonna have to go underneath there and fix this one. That one's not working. Yeah. And there'll probably be some more that'll stop working. He doesn't like the sockets. Boy, it looks a lot better with the lights working again, though. So. Got to be careful on these. Mm -hmm. to clean these very gently. Yeah. You know what you can clean those with? Not windy. <laughs> you can clean it with wax. Wax is a cleaner. You can just wax them. They look pretty good. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to keep working it, and then uh, we got to do some repairs on it. Okay, folks, we're looking in the manual. So I'm trying to get all of the switches working. It's the next thing, right? So there is a switch matrix. So all of these little square areas here basically represent a switch. And they don't have all of them written on this particular part of the schematic, but it does say that this row, see, they, they use the, they use the, uh, hmm, do I have this right? The A1J72 and A1J68, those are like the strobes coming in, and then there's also columns, right? So the test switch does not work. It ain't doing nothing. So maybe it's this line here, right? But the number one coin shoot does work. So it must not be that line. So maybe it's this line, but it looks like that line, all it does is the test switch. Okay, number one coin shoot, number two coin shoot, the replay button, it works too, so we know it works. So we've just got a, we've got a, uh, a few things here we need to try to figure out. Um, on the other part of the schematic, it shows what the actual switches are. So switch zero doesn't work, switch ten doesn't work, the spinning target. Switch 20 doesn't work, the number one drop target. You see a pattern here? Switch 30 doesn't work, the number three drop target. Switch 40 doesn't work, the number five drop target. Switch 50 doesn't work, the number two drop target. And switch 60 doesn't work, the, the number four drop target. So this shows this as a different connector, but that's because the test switch is on the front coin door and the rest of these are on the actual play field. But if you look, the color is the same. It's because it's the same strobe. So switch 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So our problem is on that line. We are missing that line. I need to go look at that. A1J7 pin 2 and A1J6 pin 8. So we need to figure out uh, on the MPU, the switch is connected to the MPU, if there's a problem there, if that's not connecting to the... Um, we just need to look at the schematics and see where that goes. So here's strobe 0 on the CPU. It connects to I see 8, which is the 7404th. That is the one we replaced. Uh-oh. I better make sure that's making a good connection. Maybe I, I hope I screwed up the socket or something, right? And then you can see that it it branches off and connects out this connector, too. So one of these goes to the coin door, and one of them goes to the play field. Okay. So we know for a fact that something's going on there. So I'm going to mess around with that and see if I can figure it out. Now, if this chip were to get screwed up and voltage spiked through here, this is our spider chip. So we want to make sure it's not messed up. That would be horrible. Okay, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to look at the um, look at the board and see if I can figure out if all that stuff's connected like it should, or if I screwed the socket up, or there's a cut trace, or something like that. Okay, folks, so I looked in the game, and unfortunately, <laughs> this pin is definitely connected to pin 2 on the uh, IC, as well as the other one. And then I checked to make sure that the wiring in the cabinet was all connected back to there, and it is. And then I checked all the diodes on all the switches, and they're all cool, too. And remember, this chip is new. Uh-oh. <laughs> so this isn't working, and this chip's fine. Oh, oh, God. 
It might be the spider tip. Oh no. This is very, uh, this is very, uh, uh, we're, we're risking $200 here, people. Okay, so we're going to check it with the logic probe. So here's how you check it. You take the connectors off, and then you boot the game up. Now, remember, you have to do that slam switch defeat that we did on the previous video. You have to get rid of the slam switch because the thing won't boot without the slam switch connected. And if you take these connectors off, the slam switch will not be connected. So we talked about on the, that on the previous video. So then you take a logic probe and you check and see if all of these pins are twinkling. If they're all talking, uh, then the board's fine. Okay. So let's say like this one, we think all these work, so it's really only this one. But let's say this one is stuck, but on this side it's talking. Well, that means your spider chip is fine. It's talking like it should, but then it doesn't go through this chip. This chip isn't doing its thing, right? If this side's stuck, if pin one is stuck, our spider chip's dead. One, three, five, nine, eleven, or thirteen. Okay. So if the odd ones are stuck, we're screwed. If the even ones are stuck, uh, well, I've got the thing disconnected. Then this chip's bad. But I don't see how that could be because we already replaced it. So pins one and two are the ones that we care about. So we want the even ones. We want the odd ones to work. If the even ones don't work, it's the chip. If the odd ones don't work, it's the spider chip. Okay, so there is the spider chip. What do you think? Boy, it looks good. So how could it have went bad? Well, if, you, if voltage got shorted through that chip, it would have fried the spider chip. Poor little spider chip. It's hung on since 1978, and it may have fried now. Oh, boy. Oh, oh man. If it did, we're messed up. Okay, so uh, pin one is the important one. Pin one is the spider chip talking to that strobe that we're looking at. But let's do some of the other ones just to uh, build up the suspense. One, two, three, four, five. So pin six is the output of this one. I've got to go real careful so I don't short anything. Pin six is twinkling. So that's an even one. That means this chip is outputting. So if the output is twinkling, you know the input is pulsing too. And it is, okay? So that's that strobe. So pin four. Pin four is pulsing, so that's the output of this chip. And if it's if four is pulsing, then the input must be coming from the spider chip, pin three. It is. Okay, so pin two is the output of this chip on the strobe that we're worried about. Uh-oh. So the output of this chip is dead, but that could be because the input is dead from the spider chip. That's what you would think because this is a new chip. Right. So pin one is the input from the spider chip. Here's our $200 pin. Yeah, baby. So the spider chip has held on all these years. It's just fine. It's that damn new chip is somehow screwed up or I've got that pin, pin one. Uh, or pin two, actually, I may have shorted the five there somewhere, somehow. So how do you figure that out? Well, you can turn the game off and just check between five volts and pin two. But uh, regardless, we can swap that chip out because that's, see, this chip cost you a whole new board. It's $200. This chip is 20 cents. I'm in the money, I'm in the money. I wonder if that's from 1933, that song. I wonder if I could play that or if it's still copyrighted. I'll bet it's copyrighted. Let me think. I could try to edit that in and then see if YouTube says I can't edit it in, then I'll just replace it with silence. The long lost dollar has come back to the fold. With silver you can turn your dreams to gold. Oh, we're in the money, we're in the money. We've got a lot of what it takes to get along. We're in the money, the sky is sunny. Oh man, depression, you are through, you done us wrong. Oh. So, let's check it out. I put a new one in. Whoop. Pin four. 
then three, then one, and two was our high one. Now working fine. Okay. Now, whenever I pulled out that chip that I put in, I said it was new. It was new old stock. How old? It was from 1976. So somehow I had a chip from 1976 and I put it in a board from 1978. No wonder it didn't work. It's too old for the board. So I'll save it. It'll probably work if I find a board from 1976. I think that's how that works. Okay, so we can now go into test mode, but this thing has one of the most ridiculous test modes ever. It only lasts for five seconds. I don't even know why in the world you would need one that does that, but... If I hit the test switch, the displays are, are screwed up, so we got to figure out what's going on with that. But basically, down at the bottom where it says 1, we're at test 2, 3, I guess, if that's correct. And so it's basically, this is like diagnostics, uh, not diagnostics, uh, bookkeeping stuff. And eventually you get up to test 12 or something, and it's the display test, but they only run for like 5 seconds, and then it, because there's 11, look. You can't let it keep going. Once it does it one time, it'll kick you out of test. Eight, nine, zero, one. Okay, so I'm gonna hit it again. Okay, so that was 12. So here's number 13. We got a few lights. Here's the solenoid test. When this is done, it's gonna kick us out. <laughs> All right, you kicked this back out. I wanted to go to that second display test, actually. So we're going back in. So it's, it's the worst diagnostic test in the world because they only last for 10 seconds. I don't know why in the world they wanted to do that. Okay, here we go. So see, it can display the correct numbers. So I think the reason that it's... Uh, Give it us all the junk. Well, the bottom one's always screwed up, though. Um, it may be that we need to reset the settings, like that setting. So the way we do that is you go into test, and you hit the reset board on the button on the actual board. If we can do it without it kicking us out immediately. So there's a reset button. You hit that, okay, it reset it to zero. And then we gotta go through each one and do that, but it's not really gonna do us any good because I haven't got the battery on there yet. It's number one. I don't think it reset. Yeah, it's not reset. So I gotta go through and do each one of those. Okay, so the whole time that we've been playing this thing, this digit is locked on. Um, this is the status display down at the bottom. And the way these work is they have these little chips that say UDN6118 that make it all happen, right? So this one handles the segments. There's also a 7432. I don't really know what it does. And this one handles the digits. So the, the MPU sends out a strobe uh, on all of the digits and so there's these four and then there's six on four other displays so there's 28 different digits right and it's all strobed so with some other control line it tells it whatever um, but anyway uh, these four are turned on by this chip so it's pins two and three and five and six now it could be the um, it could be the output of the MPU, but because of the way it strobes it, I don't think it is. I think this chip screwed up. Uh, and I tested it, the, the, um, I tested the signal with my multimeter, not on the board, but on the, I mean, not on this, but on the harness after I took this out. And I'm getting, you know, just strobing, pulsing lines on all of this. So I think it's fine, but we'll find out. So I think maybe the output is screwed up here. All right, so I'm gonna swap that chip. So it's a UDN6118. And I got that chip, even though it's a weird one. Now you might say, now how in the world do you have that chip? 
Look, people, this ain't my first rodeo. I've fixed these before. You need a UDN 6118 so you can fix the displays, so I keep them in stock. All right? So uh, I'm going to swap it out, and we'll see if that fixes that where it lights up or doesn't light up when it's supposed to. <laughs> um, uh, whenever, this, so basically it's a one, and then whenever like a number is supposed to be in there, you see that number in there too. So it's just, yeah, some, some icky stuff going on. But I think we're looking pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to swap that chip, and then that'll be it for this board. Now, I need one other display for the fourth player. and uh, But we'll see if this fixes this one, and then we'll work on that dead fourth fourth player one. That seems to have fixed it. Swapping that chip. But let's get to the display test, and then we'll know for sure. It's not that one. must be the next one. Does it not do it? Maybe that doesn't do the display test. Hmm. There may be no display test for that little display. But whenever you head out a test, um, which it will do on its own here in a second. Eventually, so the the third digit is no longer locked on. They're all equal brightness, and I'll bet if I was to try to start a game, there we go. See, it turned off. There's a one, so I think we're good. I think everything's as it should be. Okay, so we need to mess with this fourth player one. Okay, so this whole time we've had a problem, we showed in a previous video, where the fourth player display, I've now swapped these, but the, the fourth player display, when it was plugged in, it would short out the power supply so that the 60 volts that runs the power supply would drop down to like 20 volts. But that was before we rebuilt the power supply. So after I changed some capacitors and things like that on the power supply, I never plugged the fourth display back in because I thought it would short out the power supply. But guess what? Seems like everything's cool now, so I don't know why that is, but it's not shorting out the power supply. I checked, it's it's at 63 volts right now. And the uh, 40 down here that runs this one is at like 43 volts, so I don't know. Everything's cool. Okay, so uh, they're a little bit dim, though. So there is a trick you can do to brighten the things up. Um, it's the Todd Tucky fix. Todd knows. Todd knows how to fix them. There's a bunch of different ways you can do it, but basically you, you take voltage <laughs> and put to the two outside pins and shock the hell out of it, and it burns the little heater filaments in it and makes the display brighter. It burns the crap off the heater filaments. I'm not kidding. That's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to try to do it with the coin door um, coil. So there is a coil right here on the coin door. That's got 24 volts on it. Um, and we're going to use it to shock the hell out of our display. So let me go get some little jumper wires. Let's get dangerous. We're going to be like electro boom. Okay, so just for comparison's sake, notice that the first player and the fourth player are dimmer than the other one. So we're going to do this one first. So how it's dimmer than the second player. The second player one looks pretty good, and the third player one looks pretty good. So we're going to do that fourth player one first. Okay, so very carefully, by the way, don't do this, but I'm going to do it. Very carefully, we have attached alligator kit clips to the outside pin on both sides of the glass. Okay, now these are Futaba vacuum uh, fluorescent displays. They run off 60 volts. So what we're going to do is we're going to put 20 volts, or 25 volts, the, the solenoid voltage, across the filaments that are like the heater that, that make it glow, right? We're just going to do this for a few seconds. So I've attached clips to the coil on the coin door that does the lockout. There's a coil that comes on whenever the game comes on. It, it, uh, it pulls in so that the game can take quarters, um, but only when the game's on. Okay, So we're going to leave it on for just a few seconds and see if it burns any of the crap off of the filament. But if you do it too long, it will burn the filament in half, so you don't want to do that. 
But we're going to zap it a little bit. You should be able to see it. What do you think? All right, so we're going to put it back in and see if that made it any better. Any questions, people? Are there any questions, folks? You didn't think it was going to work, did you? Come on now. Look at it. I th this isn't my first rodeo, people. I told you that. I don't know why you always doubt me whenever I tell you. Look. Look, this ain't my first barbecue. I don't know. All right, folks. It's looking a lot better. I like it. I put the lights, of course, back in the back box. It was uh, We had all of those out. Um... We're getting there, but we still got all kinds of stuff left to do. I still got to put a battery, uh, remote battery on the, the MPU so that it can save the high scores. Uh, we still have to work on some of the light bulbs on the play field. We still have to work on the roto target, which doesn't, doesn't roto. They're not as fun if they don't roto. and <laughs> kind of needs to do that. We still need to clean up the uh, cabinet a little bit. Um, and then, last but not least, we still need to play test it. But I think it came out pretty good. I think the play field looks pretty nice. Looking good. I got Joe's light bulbs working that he was concerned about. Also, I got the, the correct Gottlieb flipper rubbers on it. They're a little thinner than the regular ones. Got to have both types, you know. Um, so, yeah, we're looking pretty good. But we still got a little bit of stuff to do. And then we have to play it, of course, too. So... I hope you've enjoyed it so far. Make sure to leave your comments below. Um, give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. We didn't have to film all this, people. We could have just done it on our own and not shared it with anybody. But, you know, we're not those type of persons. <laughs> we're not greedy like that. So uh, uh, give us a thumbs up. And uh, if you do want to uh, make us feel greedy, uh, if you go to our website, lionsarcade.com, we have a parts page. And on our parts page, we list a lot of the items that we use in our videos for repairs and things like that. Of course, we also list all of our arcade games on there for sale. The, on the parts page, if, it, if the items take you to Amazon, if you're going to buy anything on Amazon... If you use our link, it gives us a tip. So we appreciate everybody that's been doing that. Uh, and then last but not least, don't make, sh make sure to check out our brother. My brother Donnie uh, has his own channel here on YouTube. And uh, we work on these old pinball machines. He works on old buildings and old, uh, old vehicles. So a lot of times I'm over there with him messing around with that. He's crazier than we are. You know, in this camera, that first display looks like it's flickering and everything, but it's not. To my eye, it's not flickering. It's just the camera interacting with it. So don't worry about it. Looks pretty good. Do you want to see it with the lights off? Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah, that's a red Nintendo cabinet there. Don't worry about it. We got all kinds of cool stuff in here. Come on, people. These Gottlibs are awesome. Anybody that doesn't know these are cool, they I just don't they must not know what cool is. So I like it. These are some of my absolute favorites. I like how they're similar to the EMs and they're just a little step forward on that. Um, I just I just like how it's done. So, and I like how they they put the flashers behind the the windows on the the spacecraft. Looks fantastic. This is going to be make somebody a great machine. They're going to love it. So there you go. We'll do another video where we uh, we work on that roto target. I'm excited to get it going. But uh, we'll see you on that one. Hope you enjoyed it.